let me invite you to please stand and open your Bible in the Old Testament, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 26, verse 1 to 30. So we will read the responsibly. I will read the verse 1, we will read the verse 2, up to 12, and uh, let's uh, read together in chapter 30. So our subject for tonight is uh, the sacrifice of biblical worship, and this will be our last thing, lesson for this month that deep about first thing by the love of Christ to worship Him. And this evening, I will talk about the, the heart, the spirit, and the fundamental nature of God's believer who worship the living God. So, Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 1. And it shall be, when thou art come unto the Lord, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance, and possesseth it, and readeth therein. Verse 3, And thou shalt go unto the priest, that shall be in those days, and say unto him, I profess this day unto the Lord thy God, that I have come unto the country which the Lord swear unto our fathers for to give us. Five, and thou shalt speak and say before the Lord thy God, a Syrian, ready to perish, was my father, and he went down into Egypt, and soldered there with a few, and became there a nation, great, mighty, and populous. Seven, and when we cried unto the Lord God, of our fathers, the Lord heard our voice, and loved on our affliction, and our labor, and our oppression. Nine, he hath brought us into this place, and hath given us this land, even a land that floweth with milk and honey. And
and other meaning, the feeling of expressions of reverence, adorations, or adidi, honor with religious rites. So we are not to worship saints, we are not to worship the statutes, we are not here to worship the prophets, or Mary, the mother of Jesus. But what is the biblical definition of worship? Worship is not a big amount of money you put in the offering baskets. Worship is not the hymn you sing. And worship is not uh, the type of song you sing, uh, the choir sings. Some Christians dance around. As you can notice, some Christians dance around, lift their hands, and shout and play uh, loud instruments and uh, sing uh, 24 songs and they call it worship. Some Christians are uh, like a Baptist. Uh, we come to church, we uh, sit in our pew, uh, sing uh, traditional hymns, uh, giving tithes and offering, and we call it worship. Some Christians also are speaking tongues and they call it worship. So, what is the really the worship? Yes, they, they, these are the acts or expressions of worship, but they are not uh, uh, defined what the worship really is. So, not everything we call worship is actually worship. We learned from the beginning uh, when uh, both uh, Cain and Abel uh, brought sacrifices to the Lord, but the Lord looked with favor with uh, Abel's offering, and he did not look uh, with favor on Cain and his offerings. So Cain uh, brought an uh, acceptable sacrifice to the Lord, and he demanded that the Lord will be pleased. So what was the problem of Cain's offering, aside from his uh, stubbornness, jealousy, and uh, murderous act? So uh, Cain, uh, he lacked a proper theology of worship. To know, uh, to know about worship, let me, let me remind you, brothers and sisters, that worship is a distinct method of approaching God. Worship is different from prayer and praise. Prayer and praise may contain a worship, but among themselves, they are, uh, some, uh, they are something altogether different. So prayer is the obsession of the soul with its needs. So prayer says, Lord, save me, or Lord, uh, give me this. So prayer asks for the things that our heart and soul desire. Prayer is an acknowledgement of our needs for God. While the praise is the obsessions of the soul with its blessings. So, praise says, thank you Lord for all that, uh, the thing you have given me and done in me. Praise says, thank you for your gifts. So, there is something wrong with, there is nothing wrong with vocal, visible praise. He is infinitely worthy of all the praise we can give to Him. Amen? And last, worship is the obsession of the soul with God Himself. So worship focus is not on itself or its blessings. Worship focus in God alone. Worship says, Lord, thank you for who you are. Thank you for you being holy, loving, merciful, powerful, and etc. So our acknowledge of Him should cause us to bow down before Him in a humble worship. So I want to take a from the Deuteronomy. So Deuteronomy means the second law, which records Moses' last words to the Israelites before they entered to the promised land. In our text, God is instituting the face of the first fruits. Moses told the Israelites that once they were settled in their new home and began to reap the harvest, that they have to take the first portion and bring it to the Lord as an offering of thanksgiving and worship. So the book, doon sa nabasa natin, pinalalahan lang po sila ni Moises na pag sila ay nakapasok na sa promised land at nakapag-settled na, at yung permag na pag-settled na doon, so lahat ng kanilang aanihin ay iahandogin na sa Diyos bilang pakasalamat at pagsamba sa Kanya. In these verses, God tells His people how they should appreciate Him approach Him and adore Him. So, number one, the worshiper appreciation. The children of Israel are told to approach Him 
great appreciation for the wonderful things he has done for them. So, ang gusto ko nga, uh, uh, mga Israelites po ay, uh, kung sila nalapit sa Panginoon na mayroon pa kasalamat sa mga biyay at uh, itigas ngayon ng Diyos. So, number one, eight, for his restoration in verse one. So, the Israelites, the Israelites worshiper is reminded that God brought him out of Egypt and has settled him in the promised land of blessings. The Israelites worshiper would remember how God parted the Red Sea, fed his father with manna from heaven, led his people with a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, give them water from a rock and defeated all their enemies. So, ang isang kong suwasan pa sa Panginoon, mga Israelites, ay pinalalahanan uh, ni Moises na kung paano uh, ang Panginoon ni Camilo sa kanilang buhay, kung paano sila matawid dun sa Red Sea, at uh, binigyan sila ng mga yung pray from uh, heaven and the manna and uh, during the journey uh, yung uh, 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 led them about the uh, uh, pillar of the clouds by day and the pillars of uh, fire by night at gano'n rin pa yun ang pagtulong sa Panginoon sa kanila o pang uh, sa mga kalaban at then sa, sa especially dun sa tubig na kinala nila in this verses God tell his people how they should appreciate him So in, our, in other words, the Lord has given Israelites a heritage and they were to thank God for it. The same should be true to us. We need to remember that the Lord has brought us out there in life. So we need to remember that we deserve a punishment of hell, but that the Lord has given to us eternal life. He delivered us from a place of separation and isolation. And he has brought into a place of spiritual intimacy uh, with him. So in Ephesians 2, 5 and 6, even when we were dead in sins, had quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved, and had raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. In verse 1 to 11, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things up to the counsel of on his will. So the Lord has restored us to a place of a perfect fellowship with himself, and that truth should cause us to worship and glorify him. Amen. So not only for his restoration, but also for redemption. And verse 5 to 8, Deuteronomy. The Israelite is to come before God and offer thanksgiving for how God has brought them on their lives. The worshiper is to be thankful for how God moved in power to deliver his people from their bandits. So, ang isa pong uh, uh, mga Israelites ay magpasalamat sa Panginoon kung paano uh, dinilibod ng, uh, sila ng Panginoon para sa kanilang pagkaalipin sa mga Egyptian. So the worshiper is to remember that he has been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. So as you will remember, during the past over, God told the Israelites to sacrifice a spotless lamb and mark the doorpost and lintel with its blood. The blood of the Lamb saved the Israelites from death. As it kept the angel of death from entering their homes, the Israelites were saved from the blood and the firstborn children. Is stay alive. So yun po yung uh, pinala ng Panginoon at utos ang Panginoon na lahat po ng mga children of Israel ay uh, magka, magpahit po ng uh, dugo uh, ng dupa sa kanila uh, na parang iwasan po yung uh, pagkamatay po ng uh, mga panganay. Not only for the uh, restoration and uh, redemption but also for His rewards in verse 2 and 9 The Israelites worshiper was to remember that God had blessed him beyond belief. He had planted him in a place where all his needs were with. He was to remember that he has given the land a place of peace, prosperity, and blessings. So, dapat na alalahan nila kung ano yung mga binigay sa inyo ng Panginoon na lupain, na lugar ng kapayapaan, yung cemetery. Kasaganahan, at uh, pagkapala, and uh, he has to be grateful for uh, those blessings. Not only did God save 
our souls. Amen. Amen. But He has blessed us, blessed us with spiritual blessings. In fact, a good example is in Ephesians 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God in the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all the spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Just like what Moses did, Paul reminds the Ephesians of what God did for them. As he tells them, he is faithful, enjoyable, and gracious God. In your notes, just consider some of what God has given you in Jesus Christ. So, mga ilang mga pinigay na pang spiritual blessings sa mga ilang mga ilang Jesus. Number one, the everlasting life. In John 6, verse 7, 10, 28, so, our salvation is secure, and our name is the Lamb, is the Lamb, box of life. Next, another spiritual blessing, adoption into his family. In John 3, 1, verse 3, in Romans 8, 15, we are called now the sons of God. And next, His presence. In Hebrew 13, chapter 13, verse 5, God has promised to us that He will not leave us or us forsake us. Amen. Next, His provisions. Philippians 4, 19, Matthew 6, 25 to 34, He promised also that He will supply our need. Amen. And next, His love. In Jeremiah 31, verse 3, His everlasting love. Next is uh, His forgiveness. In Psalms 103, verse 12, and 1 John 1, 7, it says that His blood cleans us from all our sins. And next is advocacy. In 1 John 2, 1, when we sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ. And next, His indwelling Spirit. In John 14, 17, the Holy Spirit will dwell in us. So He is permanently residing in us. And the last, His promise of a new home. Amen? Amen. It's not a home, it's a mansion. So those blessings are a small portion of all we have in Jesus. So, ilan lang po ito sa mga biyayang uh, binigay sa atin ng, sa mga ito ng Panginoong Jesus. So, we have lots of reason to thank God for His many blessings. Amen? Amen. So, marami po tayo dapat magpasalamat sa Panginoon. So, maganda lang po sa pag-ising natin yung, 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 uh, yung ating uh, pag-ising ng uh, malakas ang katawan at hindi po tayo nag-ising in, uh, in the bed of hospitals. So, number one is the Worship and appreciation. And next, the worshiper approach. This passage tells us the attitudes that should be in our soul as we come before Him to worship. This passage tells us the attitudes that should be in our souls as we come before Him to worship. By returning to God at first, proportion of what God has given to us. We strengthen the ministry of this congregation. Amen. We work towards developing and supporting program here in BBC. And in the ministry that bring help in Christ's name. All of this is possible when we take God's blessing seriously and respond with the gratitude of first fruits. When we come to when we come first to Jesus for salvation. We approach Him through prayer. Amen? When He saved our souls, we are thankful and praise Him for all that He has done for us. We are all slaves to sin, and it deserves punishment. God is a great God. And when we give our offerings, we need to, we need to purposely acknowledge that He is the giver of all good things. He is the source of all blessings. Amen. So, when the worshiper approaches God, we must come with
with gratitude. Amen. The Israelites was commanded to approach God with the best of the land. Notice in verse 2, that thou shalt take of the first of all the fruit of the earth, which thou shalt bring up thy land, that the Lord thy God given thee, and thy shalt put in a basket. So we have a basket dito, no meron tayo. And below, okay, and below. And thou shalt go to the place which the Lord thy God shall choose to place his name there. He takes the blessings the Lord has enriched you and give us of them a willing sacrifice to the glory of the Lord. This is, this is the picture of gratitude in action. When we approach the Lord in worship, we should also be grateful to Him for all that has done for us. In a spiritual sense, we need to fill our baskets with thanksgiving. For his blessings, and come to his and come to his house, this house, ready to offer the thanksgiving up to him. But too many times, brothers and sisters, we only come to him when we want something from God. Amen. Amen. We should all develop a heart full of gratitude for all that he has done for us. Sadly. We usually come to the house of God with the empty baskets. Means we come to worship, means we come to worship and spirit one poverty with nothing to offer him. So in John 4 23, but the hour coming and now it is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh sons to worship Him. God is looking for His people who build the offering basket with gratitude to His blessings. And will come in him, to His presence with a heart full of praise and worship. In Exodus chapter 23 verse 15, Thou shalt give the best of the unleavened bread. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread seven days, as I commanded thee, in the time appointed of the month Abib, for in the thou camest out from Egypt, and none, none, none shall appear me before empty. This is the warning of our God. So number one, letter A, we must come with gratitude and be which must come with obedience and verse 2 the highest form of praise in worship is obedience to him and to his word the Israelites were told exactly how to come what to bring and where to go only those who followed God's plan were truly worshiping God Worship in service must go hand in hand. Worship of God should propel us or drive us into a greater obedience. Worship always flows out of an obedient heart. If we are going to give Him worship, we must learn how to obey His commands. <coughs> Jesus said in John 14, verse 15, chapter 14, verse 15, If you love me, Keep my commandments. If we say we love and worship Him, but do not obey Him, our worship is worthless. So we come with gratitude. We must come with obedience and see. We must come with humility. In verse 5 to 9, the Israelites worshiper was commanded to recall his humble beginnings. He was to remember what was his what he was when the Lord found him. He is nothing but a Syrian ready to perish until God intervened and saved him. We must understand who is being worshipped. So 
nating uh, tanda po sino talaga yung ating uh, sinasamba. God is holy. God is just, perfect, powerful, merciful, gracious, loving, and etc. We are sinners saved by grace, coming before our holy God on the basis of our Redeemer. There is no room for pride in worship. We must remember that God hates pride wherever it is found. In Luke chapter 18, 11 to 12, the Pharisee, the Pharisee stood and prayed that, and prayed just with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are extortionists, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I pass twice in the week, I give tithes of all that I possess. Jesus talked about the damnation of Paulus Pharisee, as we read it who came to worship with pride in his heart. While God hates pride, he respects and responds to humility. In Isaiah, in Isaiah 57, 15, For those said the high and lofty one that inhabited eternity, those whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place, with him also that is of contrite and humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the constrained ones. In James 4 6, but he gave more grace, wherefore he said, God resisted the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. A.W. <coughs> Tosel spoke, It is delightful to worship God, but it's also a humbling thing, and the man who has not been humbled in the presence of God will never be a worshiper of God at all. He may be a church member who keeps the rules and obeys the discipline, and who tithes and goes to the conference, but he'll never be a worshiper unless he gets deeply humbled. We like dancing in skylights. We must remember that we are hell-bound sinners when the Lord found us. We were sinful, vile, defiled, and dirty, but He loved us and saved us from the wretched conditions. So everything we have, not a bagay meron tayo, everything we will ever achieve, o mga bagay na magkakaroon pa tayo, ay isa lang po sa a result of His amazing grace. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And His grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I labored more about, abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. So number one, the worship of appreciations. Number two, the worship of approach. And last, the worship of adoration. When the worshiper came before God, he was to sit yet before the Lord thy God and worship before the Lord thy God. He did not come before the Lord God with a petition on his lips, but with a presence in his hands. So, hindi lang po siya lalapit sa Panginoon para sa kanyang mga kailangan, kundi lalapit sa Panginoon na meron din po siyang iyahandong para sa Panginoon, nabibigay sa Panginoon. When the worshippers came before the Lord with his gift from his feet, he was giving the Lord back what the Lord has already given him. The fact that he gave it was a symbol of his love for God and for all that God has done in his life. David expressed this talk in 1 Chronicles 29.40. It says, But who am I and what is my people? that we should be able to offer so willingly of this sort, for all things come of thee, and of thine own help we give in thee. David was merely giving back to God the things he had already given to them. And now behold, I have brought the first fruits of the land, which the old Lord has given me, and thou shalt sit it before the Lord thy God, and worship before the Lord thy God. We'll have 
will happily carry out this act of worship. Every time because God chose us, He saved us, and He blesses us. In the same way, God has commanded that we give Him our first thoughts, and not the leftovers. So, ang utos ng Panginoon ay ibigay sa, kaya ng Israel ay ibigay sa kanila yung mga unang anit, hindi po yung mga tira-tira ng So, A, to recognize His goodness. B, to rejoice His blessings. And verse 11, And thou shalt rejoice in every good thing which the Lord thy God hath given unto thee, and unto thee thy house, thou, and the Levite, and the strangers that is among you. Joy is very important for God's people. And so, brother, brother, let us read. The New Testament also commands Christians to rejoice. Like said in Philippians 4, 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. When we think what God did for us, we will have joy in our hearts. Amen? When we remember what God gave us, we will be thankful from our hearts. So, he to reject his blessings and see, to remember his commandments. To remember his commandments. In the chapter 13 of Deuteronomy, uh, in chapter 26, verse 13, so, Then thou shalt say before the Lord thy God, I have brought away the hallowed things out of my house, and also have given them out, the Levi, and unto the stranger, to the fatherless, and to the widow, according to all thy commandments, which thou hast commanded me, I have not transgressed thy commandments, neither have I forgotten them. This act, among other things, is meant to be a reminder that all good, that all good things come from God. In that God, in that in that God blessings can become a danger if we forget that He is their source. So our worship is the same way. We simply take what he, what he has given us and we offer back the first fruit of those things to Him in the form of love, adoration, and worship. <coughs> Brethren, the object of our worship is Jesus Christ. God demonstrated His love for us while we were still unbelievers by dying on the cross to provide us the gift of everlasting life. In John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. In Romans 5, 8, But God commended His love toward us, and that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Brethren, it is the words of God in the Son's pride. I mean, it is the words of God when the bears are faith. When you have a wonderful job, when you are a healthy life, or I may say, it is the words of God when things are going well. So, madali lang kung magpuri, sumamba sa Panginoon po, ang buhay natin po ay walang problema. Kung tayo sa church na masaya, Alos na, kinakamayan natin. Kakano uh, tayo ng tulog na. Yung masaya, masaya na yung pagbubos natin sa Panginoon. But life is not a better process. What about during the hard times? You are in the midst of crisis. You part from your job. Do you still able to worship God? You lose a family more. You, you lose a family member. Do you still able to worship God? And you receive a terrible diagnosis. Do you still able to worship God? It can be difficult to worship God when our lives are busy with troubles. Ang hirap talaga na maging sumpa sa Panginoon, hindi magpasalamat, magpuri kung ang buhay natin po ay punong-punong ng problema. 
admitted that when, uh, when times in our life, uh, misa sa buhay natin, sometimes, we don't, we don't feel like worshiping God on Friday. We didn't want to go to church and whisper service. Bible study. And sometimes we wanted to live during preaching. Not because of the preacher or the sermon, but because we are distracted by the problems in our lives. Sometimes personally, I don't want to read the Bible. Because sometimes, even I read the Bible, it is not working for me. However, to surrender ourselves to the act of worshiping God, even during our trials, is a liberating experience and by doing so. We are recognizing God's sovereignty over all things. And more, it is fulfilling our created function. He created us to worship Him. God is worthy of worship regardless of how life is going. We worship God because He is God. In our conclusions, do you have anything in your worship basket today? Has the Lord done anything for you at all? If He has, why don't you select the best of those things and come before Him and give them back to Him right now in the form of worship? Thank you, and